trust and belief. He's hit, he lost the ball. Play for your brother, man. Play for your brother, man. Let's have a little finger roll. Titans did it again, baby. We are diving right back in. I'm Mike Keith with the head coach welcoming you to the Mike Vrabel Show. The bye is over. Time to get busy and take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Your team eager to get back to work. Absolutely, staying busy. It's it's not about getting back to, to work. It's about uh, being focused and, and understanding that uh, we, we all have jobs to do. We have to continue to do them better. All right, let's take a look at the keys to knocking off Jacksonville and really the keys to playing Titan football down the stretch. We call them the Nissan keys. Let's start with number one. Let's create turnovers. Yeah, but be intentional. You, you, they're not going to hand you the football. You're going to have to go knock it off of somebody. You're going to have to strip it away from the quarterback. You're going to have to tip a football, go intercept it. All the things that we're doing, we just haven't done them the last two weeks. So we have to go be intentional. Like Elijah Molden did at Jacksonville. That would help. That would help. All right. Key number two in the Nissan Keys to the offense, take care of the ball. Well, we, we want to be aggressive. We trust the, 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 the guys that we hand the football to or the guys that we throw it to, um, but we have to take care of it. We, we, we were very effective running the football last week uh, or the last time we played, but unfortunately, everybody that we handed the ball off to, uh, they fumbled throughout the game, throughout the course of the game. And, and we're going to work hard at it. We've been working hard at it. Um, and I know that we'll improve there, and then we have to be great when we throw the football. All right, let's take a look at key number three. It has to do with special teams being aggressive but staying penalty free. Yeah, you see how much field position is affected by penalties. You know, no, no, um, you know, better uh, example than the opening kickoff. We start down there, we go three and out. We have to punt. We lose 32 yards of field position because we have to repunt they take over on the 37 yard line. That's making it real hard for yourselves. And so the, the special teams unit uh, can, can especially help uh, create field, field position. Bottom line with those keys is that's playing Titan football. That is, you know, I mean, that's what we do. You know, we're, we're, we're physical, we play with great effort uh, and we have to start eliminating the bad football. When we come back on the Mike Vrabel Show, it is time to have the Titans files with Amy Wells and the mayor is part of that. Stay tuned for more of the program. Several Titans players are having outstanding 2021 seasons. Right at the top of that list, Kevin Byard doing the things the coach wants. Well, he is, but he's also, you know, taking it upon himself to, to be where he's supposed to be, but also go and make some football plays. You know, we don't want to, we don't ever want to hamstring or, or handcuff a, a player to, from going and, and making plays. And that's what Kevin's done. He's taking care of his responsibility, and then he's gone and made plays. He's found the football. Um, he's done a great job of, of improving on some, just a few little things as far as technique. You know, I don't know if there's a player that, that stabs through the pocket uh, better than Kevin does, especially not one on our football team. Um, his communication uh, is paramount to, to what we do. Uh, but I also just love the person. I love the, the, the husband. I love the father and what he does outside of football for our community. Kevin Byard has a lot of great attributes. One that really stands out is that he is real, real about everything in his life. In this week's Titans Files, Amy Wells spent some time with Kevin Byard and found out that the reason for his big 2021 is he got real with himself.
leading the team in tackles, leading the team in interceptions, doing everything possible to win ball games. I feel like that's that's what I get paid to do, and that's the type of player that I am. I'm always going to be harder on myself than anybody will ever be harder on me, so I take everything personal. Kevin Byard heard it. He heard the talk that in 2020, he wasn't as good as he had been in the past. Byard didn't shut out the negative talk for his play last season. He agreed with it. I just take it for what it is. Obviously, the talk of the offseason where, you know, Kevin Byard had a down year last year. It's kind of right. I didn't put up the statistics that I'm normally used to putting up. You know, a lot of excuses can be made, whether it was COVID, all different type of stuff. But I feel like, you know, I had to really take a different mental approach this year. Because like I said, I felt like I didn't play up to my standard last year. So I had to make sure that, you know, I had to place that chip back on my shoulder that I had my first couple of years. And it's been working. So I got to make sure I keep that chip. Uh, it's working all right. Through 12 games, Kevin Byard has been the best safety in the NFL. 64 tackles, five interceptions, his first two career touchdowns. And Byard is quick to credit John Robinson and Mike Vrabel for improving the team's pass rush. But he admits that some off-season changes have helped his game as well. This off-season, I really worked on my mental a lot, whether it was meditating in the morning, doing yoga, doing a lot of different stuff. That I, I mean, stuff that I already did, but I feel like I just took it another notch. And also my diet, I switched up my diet a little more. I'm eating a lot of fish now, not a lot of red meat. And I think that's another reason why you know, I'm flying around and I feel confident going into games. Yeah, I do feel like I'm playing better than I was years ago. And honestly, it's not about the interceptions. It's more about, for me, the leadership, the way I'm leading the guys. It's more about the communication that I've been having with the guys. And it's also more about Red if it's playing man coverage. Just all the little things that I feel like I'm doing better than I was last year. I'm flying around to the football. Obviously, I think last year, new D coordinator. We had new guys last year, but I didn't feel like we meshed well as a defense last year. And, you know, sometimes I felt like I overthought some things in different situations. But I think this year we had a really great training camp and I feel like we've just been building upon that. So I think I'm flying around and I'm just, just running around making plays. You can hear it in Kevin Byard's voice. There's pride, there's expectation, there's a standard. He knows that if he's playing well, his words as the leader of the Titans secondary mean more. Hey, we're not here to prove nobody wrong. We're here to prove ourselves right today. You know what I'm saying? And being that leader is job number one for number 31. We all need to have the same type of standard. We all have to raise the bar. And I think that's my job as a leader to make sure that my standard is high, to raise everybody else's standards around me and we can all, you know, ball and make plays. So it's been something we've been doing really well this year. That's what a pro does right there. When he's not happy with his 2020, he says, I know what I have to do to make 2021 better. And then Kevin Byard's gone and done it. Well, not only did he hold himself accountable, the one thing that we've always talked about, Kevin, is, is continuing to hold other people accountable, uh, your teammates. And, you know, that's, that's difficult. And that's something that, uh, you know, we've tried to empower him and, and he'll hold me and every, the coaches accountable just the same way that we do him. And, you know, I think it's, uh, it's been fun to watch him play. He's playing with a lot of confidence and, you know, can't wait to get him back out there. I'm excited to hold you accountable now as it's time for the Delta Dental. Can Mike Vrabel guess this Titan? As we go to break, let's see our first look at this beautiful smile. Can Mike Vrabel determine who that is? I think he can. I think I've actually got that one. It's a pretty little face. <laughs> More of the Mike Vrabel Show and the answer after this. This week on the program, Delta Dentals, can you guess this Titan? It's really, can Mike Vrabel guess this Titan? Can he? I think I can. Pretty smile, perfect little nose. Is that our quarterback, Ryan Tannehill? That was going to be my guess, Coach. Nice. <laughs> you're, play, you're over 500 now for the year. Yeah, well above. Well above 500 on the year. Talk to me about what you need from Ryan Tannehill this week and the rest of the year. Well, just continue to, to, to lead our offense. And, you know, there has been some, some moving parts. There's been some, some guys that have been in and out. Um, I will always value and appreciate his toughness. Um, and then what we need from Ryan is just to continue to, to take care of the football, to, to get us in the right play, to, uh, to understand where, where we need to go with the football when we throw it, uh, get us in the right play when we run it uh, based on, on the looks and, and what we're coaching them that week. And uh, just, just make sure that he continues to lead our football team and you know, find, find ways to win football games. 
That's what Ryan Tannehill did back in week five when the Titans won at Jacksonville by 18. In case you've forgotten, this is how the Titans pulled off that victory over the Jags. Coming off of a poor performance against the New York Jets, the Titans needed an early spark in Jacksonville. They got it on the third play of the game. Third down and 10. In the shotgun, Lawrence takes the snap. Feels heat. Steps up, throws, got it complete at the 31. Losing the football is the tight end. The Titans have picked it up and fired. To the 20, to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. Give me a signal, Mr. Official. The Titans would never trail, although it would be close throughout the first half. The teams traded touchdowns, and the Titans' lead was 14-13 to when Tennessee went on a 10-point spurt to end the first half. Tannehill rolling right, firing man is wide open at the five and walking into the end zone. Ryan Tannehill hit Michael Pruitt with a 14-yard touchdown, and Randy Bullock added a 34-yard field goal to give the Titans an 11-point halftime lead. Tannehill and company carried that momentum into the second half as Tennessee finished a 75-yard drive with a Derrick Henry touchdown run. Tannehill gets the Titans on the ball. Gives Henry at right guard to the five, to the end zone. Touchdown, Titans! It looked like the Jags were about to be blown out. That did not happen. Barely over a minute into the fourth quarter, Jacksonville scored to make it a 31-19 game. And then, just over three minutes later, it appeared the Jaguars had scored on another Trevor Lawrence run. But... Lawrence is called down at the one-yard line upon review, and Jacksonville chose to go for it on fourth and goal. Lawrence gives Hyde. He's trapped. He's stopped. He's dead. He's thrown. He's not in. From there, any momentum that Jacksonville had was gone. Henry pounded the Jags into submission in the final moments, scoring his third touchdown right after the two-minute warning. Henry on the left side to the five. Henry to the goal line. Touchdown, Titans! Henry rushed for 130 yards on 29 carries. And along with his fumble return for a touchdown, Bayard posted 11 tackles and an interception. Final score from Jacksonville on October 10th. Titans 37, Jaguars 19. Glad you're with us for the post-buy edition of the Mike Vrabel Show. We always have the Mike Vrabel six-pack, six big plays from the game the day before. Well, there was no game the weekend before, and so we're going to take a look now at six plays the Titans need to see more of down the stretch. Let's start with some pressure from Harold Landry. This is him in the Buffalo game. Yeah, these would be some good ones here, Mike. Harold inside, you know, working with Jeffrey Simmons. You know, obviously the impact that they can make in the middle of the pocket and the ability for us to move Harold around different places. You see him coming in there, getting a pick, uh, driving, you know, two for one special on the guard. Uh, really no chance there in the middle of the pocket. Harold Landry with 10 sacks and some fresh legs coming out of the bye. Play number two, let's talk touchdown passes. Want to see more of those down the stretch from Ryan Tannehill. Here's a good one to Michael Pruitt. Yeah, good hard sell play action there. Ryan's able to drift, the protection's there. You see everybody getting sucked up inside. Pru goes down there, uh, sells it, slips out of there, and so good he caught it twice. He caught it twice. He's caught three on the year, Michael Pruitt. Jeffrey Simmons actually had three sacks in a single game for the Titans as they played at Los Angeles, seven and a half on the year. More Big Jeff driving guards backwards like this. Well, hands inside on the rise can never fail right there. So you can see what he does. He puts his hands in their chest and kind of walking them back. And, uh, you know, no real reason to make any kind of move when you can just go through them like Jeff does there. And, you know, I think that the difference in his season um, has been his technique. You know, he's always been massive. He's always been powerful. He's always played hard. He's always chased the football but he's playing with some really, really cool technique, and you can see it right there. You know, a lot of things that help him. Right now, A.J. Brown is not available to the Tennessee Titans. He'll be back in a couple of weeks. But one thing we need to see more of, more run after the catch, like in this A.J. Brown play that we're going to take a look well, at. Well, that's certainly a strength of his, and you can see when we're working in this, we're running a football, clean pocket inside. 
and uh, we're, we're able to deliver the football. Um, good things will happen, you know, AJ and, and, and Julio and Nick and everybody, they're, they're fearless going inside there, Cody Hollister, it doesn't matter. You know, you're running in there and, you know, there's linebackers and a safety, but, you know, this would be good to see here. AJ get some catch and run and, and us being able to protect and, and give Ryan a firm pocket. More catch and run for the Titans. How about some more interceptions for Kevin Byard on the year? He has five on the season. We saw him in our last segment. More big plays from the mayor. Well, that, that would be great. And, and Kevin has, uh, you know, had a great year. I know he's going to continue to do everything he can to to make a, a push here as we finish. And I know he's never satisfied. And um, you can see the deep crossing route here. And not only that, but in a critical point in the game here in overtime, you know, really setting up the, the game winning field goal kick uh, with the type of play that he had right there. Big plays from Kevin Byard. And the Titans want some more big plays in special teams. Chester Rogers has been close a couple of times on punt returns. Love to have some more of these coaches. He has, and there's a lot of trust right here to go down there. And, and I thought this is well schemed here by the, by the coaches, well executed by the players. You can see the, the, the gunner going down there, protecting the goal line. Chet having trust that, that everybody's gonna be doing their job and he's not gonna catch one in the chin uh, down there inside the 10 yard line. Guys working, Matthias Farley not being, um, causing a penalty there with a blind side, but going with the shield. And, you know, a lot of good things on that clip. We, we need to create some field position in special teams. When we come back, we salute high school football teams and players in the state of Tennessee and get final thoughts on this weekend's game with Jacksonville from Mike Vrabel as the Mike Vrabel Show continues. For the last five days, high school football has taken the spotlight in our state. We want to congratulate Chattanooga for a great job hosting the Blue Cross Bowl State Championship Games. And we also want to take this opportunity on the Mike Vrabel Show to congratulate our state champions. Let's begin in Division I. South Pittsburgh does it again. Outstanding football team there. In Division II, we go to Martin, Tennessee. And that's Westview High School, led by Ty Simpson. Congratulations to them. In Division Three, it's only seven in a row for Alcoa. That's all, just seven in a row. Division Four, a very competitive overall division. And Tullahoma wins their first ever state championship. Congratulations to John Olive and all of them. He's a walk-off. He's a walk-off. He retired. The Pal Panthers won a big one over the Page Patriots. What a football game. Maybe the best game of the weekend. Pal's the state champion in 5A and 6A. The team who beat everybody. The Oakland Patriots and Kevin Creasy. Division two, there were some good games there as well. Donaldson Christian, congratulations on your state championship. In 2A, another outstanding team, Lipscomb Academy, won over CPA for the second time this year. And it's three in a row for the Blue Tornado of Ralph Potter and the Macaulay School in Chattanooga. Congratulations to them. Now, earlier today at Nissan Stadium, we crowned the 2021 Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winners. Let's run through all 10 to make sure you know their names. They came from all over the state of Tennessee. In Class A, Khalid Ganaway out of Trenton Peabody. Congratulations to him. I mentioned Ty Simpson's name earlier. Martin Westview, he is your 2A winner. In 3A, had to be somebody from Alcoa, right? Caden Buckles, their quarterback. Congratulations. Pearl Cone has a winner in 4A. Barryon Brown, the Firebirds, very proud of him. In 5A, out of East Tennessee, Deshaun Bishop, incredible running back. What numbers did he put up as a junior? And then in 6A, Destin Wade at Summit. Fantastic overall career for both of the Wade twins. Destin actually wins Mr. Football. Division two, we go to USJ's own Steel Haynes, that's University School of Jackson, that's your Class A winner. Our double A Tennessee Titans Mr. Football Award winner is Alexander Broom, the fantastic running back from Lipscomb Academy. In triple A, second year in a row, Dallin Hayden, son of Aaron Hayden, you may remember him from Tennessee. He prepped at Christian Brothers. Our kicker of the year comes from Tullahoma. It's Justice Chadwick of the state champions. You love all this. I do. And my point is here that there's a lot of those 
guys that took their teams to the state championship. And they either won it or they finished second, obviously, in Summit's case. But that's what great players do, is they make the guys around them better. And I know that these players all did that. Well, we're very proud to host Mr. Football and to be the sponsor of Mr. Football. The Tennessee Titans know that it means a lot. It means a lot to beat Jacksonville if you're the Tennessee you Titans. You got it. <laughs> we'll start it at noon on Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Join Amy Wells and Rhett Bryan with Titans Countdown beginning at 11 a.m. on 104.5 The Zone. For the head coach, Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show, and we'll see you next time.